Yeah, well done, Harry. Yeah, that's Samu, but one or two tell people went to him, by the way. He's Whoa, not bad. I'll Quick, tell you what strong. How yeah. old do you know how old he is, Al? No. 20, 21? 20. Yeah, he's, so he's, he's, he's got potential. Someone will go for him, yeah. without a doubt. Um, okay, so Ten Hag, under immense pressure, of course, spoke to the media afterwards. I'm still baffled what happened to, from one Marcus to another, from from our friend Gabby's mate to Marcus Rashford. What, why was he taking off at half-time? This is how Ten Hag summed up the performance. I think it's, um, it's mixed feelings, yes. And when you are um, winning a game, uh, we know... Oh, this is a very tough place to go. And when you then start so well, uh, the players executed the plan, I would say brilliantly. We scored two great goals. And then, you know, we're switching off. And we don't keep so much possession um, as before. Um, defending, we're switching off. We concede for a first goal, totally unnecessary. And then, you know, then you light up the fire in this stadium, in this ambience. And then it's become real uh, tough. We addressed it in a half time and then you concede a third one. So unnecessary. Uh, it's no good defending again. And that has also to do with um, yeah, some, some willingness in such moment. But then I have to praise the guys and uh, how they return in the game, how they fight, how they find a way uh, to get the equalizer. And it's not only about and uh, that we find them in the last minute. With uh, so in stoppage time, with the set play, but we also we had on four and some good chances. Mm. What I'm amazed with Val with this situation now is you, you look at your experienced players, don't you? When you tune it up, like, okay, let's you know let's get organised. Let's get you know, and look at the experience they have in that midfield area. Fernandez, Casemiro, Ericsson. Ericsson. So you're looking at those sort of players as well, and they're all quality players. We all know they played at the highest levels. What's Bruno doing as well? What's he doing away from home, Champions League, getting sent off? He's always going to get a yellow card for what he did, um, the second one. <laughs> I don't think he's got any complaints here for that. Um, he tried to say, look, I went for the ball, but high boot, you know. I, I didn't like it when he, the guy rolled around holding his head. I don't mm. think he caught his head. It's more his chest, but he was still very high, the boot, and... In this day and age of football, it's a, it's a yellow, another yellow card, isn't it? So you've got to be, you've got to be, you've got to be sensible in that situation. Don't yeah. go for it. You ain't going to get there anyway. The, the, the defender was always going to get there first. Mm. Right, half time. What do you think? This, you know, rotation. I'm not having that right. No, I, I think something about Rashford, um, who was you could say was United's best player first half. Why take him off second half? Champions League away from home. I'd be amazed that something hasn't happened where he hasn't tracked back or something. And it did the the goals did come down to the right hand side, uh, and obviously Marcus is there. Look more more to go forward. We we know he's, he's defensively he's not his strong point. Mm. And if you're scoring goals, we we had a player like Mark Overmars in yeah. my team. And as I said before, he couldn't defend to save his life. But he scored your 18 goals going the other way. Mm. So we used to say, we'll do defending for you. As long as you bang the goals in, we can do that for you. We'll cover you. Shuffle across. Shuffle yeah. across, exactly. Mm. Manu Petit, who we had on the other day. Patrick, I'll go across as well. But if he was scoring goals, Al, you'd rather a player who's got the ability to score goals, score goals, mm. like Rashford has got the ability, and someone else feels in for him. Whether it's the midfield is a little bit too old. They can't. They're not mobile enough, are they? Casemiro, Eriksson, Fernandez. Not, yeah, mo- not no, mobile enough, maybe. I agree. Uh, okay, eleven minutes past seven. Let's find out what the Manchester correspondent at the Athletic thinks. As we say, uh, say a very, very good morning to Laurie Whitwell. Laurie, morning. Morning, Laurie. Morning, guys. Thanks for having me on. You're welcome, Laurie. I'm baffled. What? What the hell was? That? What has happened at halftime? Why take Rashford off? I don't get it, me. It's a very curious one, and I think you touched on it there, Ray, in terms of the defensive aspect, because that's the only thing I can think of. Uh, Ten Hag referenced it after the game uh, in terms of Porter being able to get down that right-hand side. I think Rashford maybe let a runner go, for, certainly for the first goal, mm. but he was looking so electrifying going the other way. You know, he was looking at one of his best performances of the season, certainly for a long time. You know, he was terrorising the Porto defence, obviously scored one, set up the second. So it was a really curious one. It'll be interesting to see what happens at Villa Park on Sunday because Ten Hag obviously explained it as rotation for Garnacho. But the only thing was Garnacho, we were told before the game, was put on the bench because he wasn't quite fit enough to start. So it doesn't quite add up that to me. But at the same time, 
I guess you know he could be making a decision in the in the very moment and thinking for the for the game that they're trying to win here in Portugal that um, Garnacho is the better bet for the second half in terms of all round game. But I don't know. I'm not sure. It, it strikes as very strange to me. Yeah, but people obviously look at it. I, I look at the Southampton game as well uh, when he scored a cracking goal, didn't he, um, Rashford? Whether there's a problem behind the scenes training, I don't know. But he he dropped him for the next game after that as well, didn't he? Yeah, well, he scored then two actually against Barnsley in the League Cup um, and then took him out of the team. And obviously there was a big load of scrutiny on that, a lot of um, attention on it. And ultimately he came off the bench in that game at Sellers Park, didn't really do anything second half. So, I mean, I do have some sympathy in that you do want to rotate your strikers, your, your wingers, and, and Ahmad has been playing well as well this season. So I can see that, but it, it just last night really struck as curious given the way that Rashford had played in the game. Mm. Laurie, what about this fella up front from Porto, Samu? He's, he's, he's got to be in someone's radar, surely. Just 20. Well, Chelsea tried, didn't they, uh, Chelsea, in the yeah. summer? They they tried to sign him and ultimately it didn't work out. I'm not sure the exact reasons for that, but yeah, <laughs> he, he, he bullied United's defenders and, and that's, you know, on a United perspective, another concern really because you've got Matthias De Ligt there, uh, Lisandro Martinez, that is Ten Hag's first choice centre-back pairing that mm. he brought into the club and they were both dreadful and he ended up hooking them with 12 minutes to go for Harry Maguire and Johnny Evans, which I think speaks volumes. Laurie, I've got to ask you about Fernandes as well. I mean, mm. do you agree that he, he is a captain for Manchester United or does he go in and out of games too often and look, he made another bad decision last night for the, for the second yellow card? Do you think he's the right man to be a captain for Manchester United? I mean, you think back to when he got the armband and obviously there was so much scrutiny on Harry Maguire who had it and Eric Ten Hag made the decision to take it off him. I think he wanted someone with that fire, that kind of um, leadership quality in terms of his performances on the pitch so the players you know, could look towards somebody to, to guide them in that sense. Mm. But certainly in the last couple of games, I think he's, he's let the team down. He was obviously unlucky against Tottenham in the way that he got sent off. I would still say that there was an element of frustration in, in what he did. So he gave the referee a, a potential decision to to make and obviously you know I think it was the wrong one because the FA have, have overturned it but last night was another example of as, as you said earlier Ray just don't give the referee a decision to make there a high foot when you're already on a booking you've already had a booking for a high foot you know it, it makes no sense to me it put his team in real jeopardy ultimately they've managed to salvage a draw but he does try and he, he created a really good chance in the first half and he's one of the United's most creative players. Mm. But finding that balance between the passion and the uh, you know, the, the sensibility, I think he's struggling with at the moment. Laurie, one last one. Um, some people see United at Villa's bogey side, but to go to Villa Park at this moment in time, just before the dreaded international break, is this, could it be his last game, Ten Hag? I mean, it obviously, potentially could be. I think all the messages that I've had so far from all different aspects of the club is that they want to have patience and they want to give him um, time to try and get this right because they backed him in the summer, right, in terms of the coaching setup, in terms of the signings. <laughs> so they don't want to rip it all up so soon into the season. That being said, it's been a very bad start. United have actually had a pretty decent record at Villa Park, oddly. Mm. I mean, Unai Emery beat Ten Hag um, in Ten Hag's first season, but then United won there last season. They beat him at Old Trafford last season. So it could be a bit of an end-to-end -end game. Um, but I've reported that uh, Sir Jim Ratcliffe is planning to be there on Sunday so that might you know bring things um, you know obviously first hand to him um, so it would be really fascinating if it's another bad result how they react yeah absolutely Laurie thank you thanks Laurie uh, very much thanks, enjoy the weekend mate brilliant Talk Sport Breakfast with Alan Brazil Thursday and Friday morning 6 till 10 on AM on DAB via the Talk Sport app and on your smart speaker Talk Sport